I'm sorry. It feels bad. I'm sorry. It feels bad. After a week off of Tensura, we come back to, unfortunately, the status quo of like 80% of this episode is just recapping. And I know why. It's we have such a massive cast of characters. This writer has so many great characters that it feels like it has to spend most of its time getting everybody caught up. Something happens, we gotta talk to everybody. Something happens, we gotta talk to everybody. But no, I think the thing that bugs me most is that last, no, two weeks ago, when we had the preview, it had Luminous in the name. And I was like, cool, next episode's gonna be Luminous. No, it's a recap episode about Luminous, which is fine for me because I love Luminous. But the problem is that I thought that that was recapping for the sake of Luminous coming back in the picture. And no, she's not even in the damn episode. <laughs> I was so mad. I'm like, they must be setting up for Luminous. No, it's not. It's just recapping with the Dwarven Kingdom and recapping with Falmouth and recapping with Bulmouth. Again, it's like, just please, just do something new. But anyways, that aside, there was a few little snippets in this episode. Like, yeah, finding out that Mjorin is the queen of Falmouth. And apparently they decided to name it after Menace, which is, I don't know, that sounds pretty bad, but <laughs> who cares? But no, I think the nugget in this episode was definitely going to visit uh, Ingratia. And I typically don't like Yuki. <laughs> so whenever Yuki's in the picture, I'm always like, ugh, I don't really like his character. I really hope they do something cool with him. But I think bringing Kagalai into the picture was the massive question mark for me. Because I think the question mark that I have is really Kagalai and how they would respond to Rimuru. Because I assume that Kagalai has a really strong connection to Clayman. And so I figured that she probably wouldn't be too happy about seeing Rimuru. But she kept herself in check. But I think the doofy thing thing about this whole situation is just if you come back here way back to when they first found out that Clayman was taken down, Yuki and Kagalai was pretty upset about losing everything that Clayman had. They wanted those assets and literally Rimuru just hands it to them. <laughs> Rimuru legit just hands them the keys. Yeah, sure, Kagalai, you want to go down those ruins? I, I, I assume that Yuki had Kagalai make up the thing that she does ruins. I don't know. I, I don't think they've ever indicated that Kagalai goes into ruins all the time. I thought that she was just making up a story like, yeah, you never see me before because I like to jump into ruins and I use a lot of those assets to make money. I think they were trying to nudge Rimuru into letting them take over the ruins, do the checking of the ruins, because it does seem like there's some sort of connection between Kagalai and those ruins. Like this is something that uh, an asset that she wants. I don't know. It seemed like during the time that he was bringing up the idea of not liking to go into ruins and messing up things in there like preserving the history that's in there and examining that history to find out if there's any sort of lessons that can be learned of it. He wants the history. He wants the ruins. He doesn't want to disturb what's down there. And typically most people are going down there to just rip all the artifacts out of it and destroy anything to get to those artifacts. So Kagali's like, oh yeah, there we go. Got our chance to get in there. Let me take it over for you. So again, Rembrandt has basically just handed them the keys. They lost these ruins, which were important. There's assumption that, you know, Clayman was taking these artifacts out and using them. They got them back. <laughs> like, like, again, this is that whole, like, naivety that Rembrandt has, which is understandable. We, as our perspective of the viewer, we know what Yuki and Kagalai is doing. Rimuru doesn't. He's just completely oblivious to all that stuff. I, I would say that Rimuru does like to see the better in people. So, I, I mean, it's not, like, lost to me that this is something that he's going to overlook. But still, it's, it is one of those things of, like, yeah, you just handed him the keys. <laughs> you just gave him back everything. <laughs> Which is just, okay, sure. But no, obviously, the other big part of this whole episode was the arrival of the hero. And I, I still am holding to my theory. For those that missed my previous video, my theory right now is that... Yuki has set it up to, yes, have the hero go save the elves, knowing the elves will have to go back to uh, Rimuru's kingdom, you know, back to the forest. And my prediction is that Yuki is orchestrating this whole thing so that the hero has to go into Tempest and that that will be sort of a Trojan horse. He wants the hero to be a Trojan horse. And I, for a minute there, I was like, oh, no, maybe my theory is incorrect because Yuki actually steps in and stops them from fighting. Like, oh, hey guys, chill. Yeah, Remedu is actually a good person. He really does want to have peace with the humans. He's good. He's okay. And so I was like, okay, maybe he's not wanting something to happen with the hero. But no, that makes sense. He doesn't want a fight to happen outside of the city. He wants this Trojan horse to get into the city first. Why? Because this is the idea of the hero's power. The hero takes people and causes them to align with him. And so he needs the hero to get into the town, get that power to activate, have everybody start to like him, see him as the hero, and see Rimuru as the enemy. Again, my theory is more towards the people that are around Rimuru, people like Shion. Again, somebody that for the last 
it feels like the last, you know, 15 episodes has been hinting at Shion being powerful enough to defeat Remedu. Has the power to negate his shields. Has the has insane amounts of power that they can actually kill Remedu. They've been pointing that out over and over again. Now, granted, Shion was there, but maybe the power just hasn't activated yet. More people around Remedu needs to be hit with that skill so they will have to turn on Remedu. And at that point, that's when Yuki wants to enact something to get a fight triggered. And then Remedu's allies will turn against him. That's my theory. We'll see if it plays out that way. But again, I'm still holding to it, despite the fact that it seemed like he was trying to stop a fight there. I think he wants to wait. I think he wants to wait until some people get under the hero's wing. And the tournament is a perfect way to do that. <laughs> we had pretty much one little segment when it showed the hero's kind of past and that moment building up to the current time. It did show him in an arena at some point and he gained the favor of everybody. Everybody started to love him and praise him. I think that's going to be perfect. He's going to be in the middle of that tournament and everybody's going to turn to just love him. And again, turn against Remedu. Like I said last time though, the question mark's going to come can the hero even affect those that have been named by Remedu? People that are around him like Shion, Benny Maru, all these people, would they even be affected by him? Because again, even Yuki himself doesn't seem to be affected by it at all. Maybe it's just that his skill hasn't activated around Yuki, or it could be an aspect of what is Yuki's skill? Is it that people that are other worlders cannot be affected by him? Those are all question marks. It was cute to see the kids get brought into the picture again. I, I, I have to admit that I completely forgot about them. <laughs> That he went there to Ingracia to also invite the kids. And so when he went in that room, it was like, everybody, all the kids are like, oh my gosh, we thought that you forgot about us. I don't even remember Triss. Like, Triss was another character. Like, when she popped up, I'm like, I don't even remember who she is. I'm sure that she's somehow important. But yeah, taking them to the festival and giving them that little medal, that little pendant that gives them a free pass for like 100 silver, even though nothing really even costs a silver. It was cute. It's, it's cute having the kids show up there. But yeah, I will admit that with how much the hero Masayuki, how much he is so timid and how he doesn't speak up, which I, I would find annoying. I don't even know how he can stand that. I, having people around you that are constantly like just absolutely praising you everything you do and, and not even letting you speak, like just constantly just berating you with praise and just cutting in the conversation, even though that conversation is technically directed at you. I don't know how he stands it. So I don't know, maybe just the, the showing of how much he's just kind of fighting and getting stuck behind all the conversation. Maybe this will kind of help him like just get a spine, speak up. Because he kind of did that before they went to start to head over to Tempest. There was like this moment where they're all saying that he's going to destroy Remru and he finally spoke up and they all kind of went with him. Again, all he has to say is that Remru is an okay guy and everybody's going to agree with him. I mean, he sort of kind of got into that with that whole conversation. He's like, no, he said something about the fact that he's going to try to create a peace treaty with the humans. And they're all like, yeah, cool. You know, they, they went with it. So maybe this will be a thing to kind of push him to do that. Anyhow, that's my thoughts on episode 66 of Tensura. I, again, I, I figured that Yuki's little plan is for a Trojan horse. We'll see how that plays out. And yes, we'll see if Kagalai immediately takes this opportunity to go straight over to those ruins, grab some nasty tool that is going to be <laughs> really devastating to Remaru to bring back to him. I don't know, maybe Kagalai acquiring something from those ruins might be the tip off to Remaru that he needs to stop trusting them so much. But again, he doesn't have any indication. We have the indication. We get to see what they're doing behind the scenes. Remedu doesn't get to see that. He's too trusting. Remedu is too too pure boy. But anyhow, that's my thoughts on the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, hit that like button down below. Comment. Let me know what's thought of the episode. Additionally, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe before you leave. Additionally, if you like this content and you want to support channel more, I have links in the description below. Greatly appreciate it does. Until next time, y'all take care.